Hello, and welcome to the Thai Center video series on including students with significant cognitive disabilities in school-wide positive behavioral interventions and supports, PBIS. I'm Dr. Lindsay Iono Conradi from the University of Hawaii. In this video, we share an example of a special education teacher who is an active participant on her school's PBIS team. The image on this slide depicts a group of students with and without disabilities together in a school hallway smiling at the camera. First, we will hear about how her school PBIS team has created accessible school-wide expectations and how they teach those expectations to all students. Hi, I have worked in special education for 16 years and have been a teacher of students with significant cognitive disabilities for the last eight years. Our school-wide expectations are be respectful, be responsible, and be ready to learn. As a member of my school's PBIS team, I have made sure that our expectations are accessible to all students, including students with significant cognitive disabilities, students who are emergent readers, and students who are multi-language learners. We accomplish this by using a lot of visuals on our expectation posters. My school has posters in each hallway, outside of each bathroom, and in every other area of the school with expectations that are specific to that area. We teach these expectations at the beginning of each school year doing rotations. During the rotations, an adult in the school will teach the students what the expectations for each area look like and sound like. Teachers reinforce and reteach the expectations throughout the school year as needed. Another way our school makes these expectations accessible to students is that we have made videos that include examples of students showing what the expectation looks like and sounds like. Next, we will hear about how Erica works to create accessible classroom expectations using the principles of UDL. On this slide, Erica has a picture of her classroom expectations. One, Keep your hands and feet and objects to yourself with an icon of hands and school supplies. Two, stay in your seat with an icon of students sitting in their desk. Three, raise your hand with a zero voice with an icon of students raising their hand. And four, follow directions the first time asked with an icon of a student touching their ear to demonstrate listening. I use universal design for learning as I consider the abilities of all of my students. I make sure to use multiple modalities to create and teach my expectations. My students have a wide range of abilities. I have students who are nonverbal, I have students who have autism, and I have students who are multilingual learners. I like to make sure that the unique needs of each of my students are met. If there's a specific need, I make sure to have supplies and visuals prepped ahead of time. I program rules and expectations into communication devices, also called voice output devices, such as iPads and single message communication switches ahead of time so that students who are nonverbal are able to participate. Next, we will hear about how Erica teaches expectations to all students using direct instruction. We review our class expectations every day during morning calendar. The, for during the first few months of the year, I use an I do, we do, you do teaching strategy to teach the expectations. My paraeducators and I give students examples and non-examples of what the expectations look like and sound like. For example, when teaching the students expectation three, 
raise your hand with a zero voice. I might play the role of the student and say, teacher, 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 without raising my hand. A paraeducator models raising their hand with a zero voice. After seeing the model, I raise my hand, but I continue to yell out, teacher, teacher. The paraeducator will once again model the expected behavior of raising their hand with a zero voice. After seeing their model, I raise my hand with a zero voice. My, the paraeducator will use behavior specific praise saying thank you for raising your hand with a zero voice. My students enjoy watching their teachers role play these expectations for them. After we demonstrate, my students will repeat the expectations with us and take turns showing us what the rules look like and sound like. Every morning during calendar time, I choose one student to tell the rule verbally or with a device. Then the whole class repeats the rule using verbal language, their device, or gestures. I have rules posted in, vis in a visible place in my classroom with both words and pictures. We reteach expectations throughout the school year as needed. The role of the special education teacher and collaboration between general education and special education is very important in teaching students with significant cognitive disabilities the school-wide expectations and supporting them to generalize those expectations across all settings, including the general education classroom. Lastly, we will hear about how Erica advocates for her students by collaborating with general educators. As a special educator, I constantly have to advocate for my students and their abilities. When my students participate in the in general education classroom, I work with the general education teacher to make sure we are we have the same expectations, use the same language and are reinforcing the same expected behaviors. Oftentimes, people think that students with significant cognitive disabilities are unable to learn and follow expectations. By collaborating with general education teachers, I can facilitate opportunities for my students to demonstrate that they are capable of understanding the expectations and following them as they participate in the general education setting. School-wide and classroom PBIS expectations should be accessible to students with significant cognitive disabilities. Here are a few action items for you to consider as you move forward in your work to include all students in PBIS. First, check to see if your school expectations are accessible to all. Use UDL principles to guide the creation and teaching of expectations and collaborate with general and special educators to teach expectations to students with significant cognitive disabilities. 